One of the more commonly requested features in Fallout is the ability to play as one of the other species besides just human. Deciding what race to play in The Elder Scrolls is a staple of the experience, but it has yet to make its way to Fallout. Let's talk about multiple playable races. There's a few advantages to adding ghouls and super mutants to the mix of character creation, each giving a new experience in some way to every subsequent playthrough. Players could develop unique builds sent around the race they choose. Of course, this also depends on how the game handles such races. Yes, super mutants are strong, but do they start out with just a buff in a strength? Or do they have a higher maximum potential than a human? Perhaps the human maxes out in 10 strength, as usual, but the super mutant maxes out at 12, or maybe 15. But these primary stat changes alone aren't going to make you feel like a super mutant. You'll need unique perks, traits, and how the world react to you in a different way than a human player. This is true for both super mutants and ghouls. Both races are maligned by humans at every turn. Humans often want to kill super mutants the second they see them. The NCR even has politicians running on an anti-mutant platform. Ghouls, meanwhile, are often abused, mistreated, and heckled by humans. Some are even scared of them, out of the fear that they might become feral one day. This would allow for a fairly different experience for the player. How the world treats them, and in turn, how they treat the world. Doors might become closed, but maybe new ones open. Maybe a shady businessman wants to exploit your ghoul, letting you experience a unique quest that wouldn't come to a human. This would alter how people play Fallout, perhaps in ways that they never had before which ultimately increases the game's replayability, while making many people happy by letting them enjoy a vicarious reality of a fictional species that they like. It offers variety, but that variety is also a downfall. Because there's so many variables to account for, problems begin to arise. A case in point, Fallout New Vegas was originally planned to have ghouls and super mutants as a playable race. Obsidian CEO Fergus Urquhart stated the following, Originally, we had this idea that the player would be able to choose between three races, human, ghoul, and super mutant. It was just the engine. It really had to do with how all the weapons and armors worked. Trying to have them all work with ghouls and super mutants was just going to be... Bethesda felt like it was going to be a nightmare. It wasn't really like they said no, but it was a very strongly worded, we would really suggest that you not try to do that. To make an assumption without much knowledge in Gambrio, I have to assume that it will require a number of super mutant specific armors due to the size of the species. After all, Fallout 4 had the player collect specific armor for Strong, which was created in the creation engine based off of Gambrio. Weapons were mentioned too. I'm a little less certain what the issue would be. Super mutants use regular weapons all the time. Maybe it's the first person view models? That said, ghouls and humans share the same body type, so I expect it's significantly less of a problem there. In theory, there's no real reason why ghouls shouldn't be able to use the same weapons and armors. But maybe someone with more experience in Gambrio and Creation Engine can give their own understanding of what the potential issues would be. So do not take my word as fact. Now, besides humans, there's really only two other species, so perhaps a lack of available races is a reason not to bother really trying to make it work. If it's just ghouls and super mutants, it may be so small it's almost not worth it. Maybe we could add psychers to the list to vary up the gameplay. They can use psychic abilities as a bit of a stand-in for magic. Synths might also be an option for a location around the Commonwealth, but synths, unless specialized, are largely like regular humans in many respects. For a human-machine combination, cyborgs could be a good choice, but cyborgs, despite existing in Fallout since the first game, hasn't really got much attention brought to it, at least not in the sense of popular conception. I recently did a video on this topic, so check it out after this one. 4 to 5 playable races is a pretty solid number, but the more you add, the higher the complexity. So balance becomes an issue. One race shouldn't really completely outclass the other, and maybe shouldn't stray too far from the general gameplay. But yet, you have to make them feel unique. That's a challenge that even Elder Scroll often fails to meet. At least that's how I feel. Most feels very samey. In addition, with more complexity, the expense begins to increase. More potential bugs need to be worked out, worlds need to be balanced, and there's a worry that a chosen race might bore a player so you have to spend time making each feel fun. But a lesser issue is the blank slate beginning. Your character doesn't know much of anything about the wasteland. Fallout solves this issue with the vault being the starting place for Fallout 1, 3, 4, and 76. Fallout 2 solves this issue with your character living in a small village most of your life. And New Vegas starts you off as a person who is new to the area. But honestly, the bigger issue is just that Bethesda really loves the vault origin more than anything. And that's typically reserved for humans. In theory, the other races have existed in a Fallout world much longer and should know more about the lay of the land. Of course, writing is a problem. The reality is there's going to need to be a lot of lines reflecting your chosen race. An old lady running a store might react pretty different to a super mutant stomping up to buy something than she would a human. So voice acting costs is going to jump up pretty high. 
In addition, there's lots of writers who feel that the story needs to be human-centered, otherwise people will not relate and thus disengage with the product. In some sense, there may be something to it, not in the way that the players wouldn't be able to relate to a ghoul, but more like not every race is going to have the same plot device to start the game. And sometimes it doesn't really make a ton of sense. Would Benny and the two cons really be able to get the drop on a super mutant? Still, with all the complexity, I do think it would make for an interesting feature to add, if it ever does. I feel the variety could be worth a test in gameplay, and I'm very curious to see how it would make out. It could fulfill a lot of people's wishes while allowing them to test a new gameplay feature for each race. On the other hand, perhaps this feature would be underdeveloped and not so enjoyable. Maybe it's best to stick with what works and not try to rock the boat so much. I don't know, what are your thoughts? Do you want multiple playable races? Thank you.